Hi and welcome to the continuation of the functions module. Um, so now you are able to create um, and use your own functions. So congratulations. Um, to finish off this section, we'll be looking at iterators. Um, so iterators are how we perform looping uh, in Q and it does act differently to um, other languages you may be familiar with. Um, and just to note that iterators used to be called adverbs. So if you do see that notation or, or that wording elsewhere, we are referring to iterators here. Um, and like the way the word kind of um, describes, iterating is, is a way of doing things, you know, multiple times over um, a certain object. Um, so for example, in Q, if we try to add two lists of different lengths together, so say for example, we have one plus two and then three, four, five, Q would not allow us to do this. We get a length error. Um, if we added in a third one here, it would allow us to do this. So both um, sides need to be the same length. Um, either that or one of them needs to be just one element long. So I could do something like this. But as soon as I add in um, anything that is more than one and not the same length of one of the lists, I will get a length error. Um, so how would we be able to do this addition? Um, and that's where our iterators come in. So we've got two different kind of iterators in Q. One is called mapping iterators, which is the more basic form, I guess. Um, and that is doing something like using the word each. And um, we also have each right and each left. Um, so for example, I might just start off with a quick example first of each. So we did see earlier, if we remember, we had our um, in a previous module, we had created a mixed general list. So let's have a go with that again. So let's create our list G. We had, uh, we'll give it a symbol, ABC or ABC. We'll give it a float and we'll uh, give it a date maybe. Um, so great. So I've created my list G. Now, if I ran type on G, I would get zero h back and that's my mixed list. Now, if I know it's a mixed list, but I'm interested in what are the underlying types of each element, I could simply run type each g. And what that's doing is saying, okay, go down one level and say, give me the type of every single value individually and I'm getting returned to those separately then at the end. So that's how we would use each to loop over something um, or to iterate over our input here, which in this example is mixed list. Um, I can then extend that with the each right and each left um, operators. So each is the keyword each. Each left and each right are a bit more funky. Um, we've got a backslash and a colon and a forward slash and a colon. Um, I always get these confused. So each left, the backslash, yeah, is the backslash. So it's leaning to the left and then each right is leaning to the right. So that's kind of a way you can think of it to remember. Um, we've got um, our <clears throat> code.kx.com iterators here. This is where we got our diagram from. Uh, so we'll definitely spend some time here going through these really nice examples on, on what exactly is happening. Um, but at a high level, let's run these to see what happens. So um, our list is um, one, two, and then three, four, five. So um, we can see what's happening. If we've got on the left, we've got three, four, five. So we're adding one to three, four, five, and then we're adding two to three, four, five. And then um, conversely on the each right operator, we're adding three to one and two, four to one and two, and five to one and two. So with the left, the each left, what it's doing is applying the left-hand side of the list to each element on the right. And then with the each right, you're applying the right-hand side um, of the list to each single parameter on the left in turn. Um, so you see your, your resulting structure um, will be you know, one is, um, they're different depending on which one you use. So hopefully that can illustrate to you um, what's happening there. Um, we also have, we touched on each as well before, but let's have a look at that in terms of using strings. So I've created a list L, it's got four elements. I've got count each L, so I'm doing, it's got three, five, five, and three. So that's that is three, quick is five, brown is five, and box is three. And then I'm doing type of each of those. They're all 10H, which, is a string, we can double check that, just go into our little, um, what did I say, 10. Yeah, so it's character, so character is the same as string. Um, I use the words interchangeably. Um, so um, each can only modify a monadic function, so taking one um, parameter, um, but if we had a multivalent function, or if it had two parameters, we'd use the each boat operator, and that just looks simply like 
this um, this tick. Um, so this is saying each both in Q. Um, so if I did three tick L without this, what would happen would be I get that quick and brown. And when I'm saying three tick each both of L, it's saying, okay, I don't want the first three elements of the list. I want the first three of each element of the list. Um, so I'm getting T-H-E, Q-U-I, B-R-O and F-O-X back. Um, so this question is, can you predict what three tick tick um, L returns? So we can give that a go just to see what happens. So it's just duplicating each of these elements over and over again. So for T, I'm getting T, 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 H, 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 E, E, E. Um, and then so it's, it's basically going down to the next level and getting three of each of those. So hopefully that illustrates each and each both and the differences. Um, we've got a nice little exercise here, creating two lists and joining them item by item. Um, so pause the video and have a go at those. Um, so now let's take a quick look at the second type of iteration. Um, and I think this is best illustrated with an example. Um, so if we just move this up here. So we've got two types of accumulating iterators. Um, they're both uh, they're called scan and over and they can be used using the keyword scan or a backslash um, and the keyword over or a forward slash. So you can use whichever you prefer. Um, let's just take an, an example to have a quick look at how this is uh, working. So if I pass plus and scan into this list, one, four, seven, ten. So I'm gonna just do that as well to copy what's happening. Um, so I've got plus and I've got backslash into one, four, seven, and 10. And I didn't use plus here and I didn't put the bracket in the right place. Great, cool. So I'm getting one, five, 12 and 22. So let's look at how this is working. So. Um, what happens with the scan up operation is it takes the first element, so for this example is one, and it joins it to the, um, it adds it to the previous element in the list. So we didn't have any previous elements, so therefore we're just getting one as a result. So you see here, input is one, output is one. Then on my second um, round of the iteration, I'm taking the second element of the list, which is four, and instead I'm joining it to the previous result. So I'm joining it to this one here, not this one. So it's the, the it happens to be the same, obviously, it's the first element of the list, but um, we're joining it to the result of the first um, round of iteration and then I get five. Um, so then on my third round of iteration, I take my third input, which is seven, and I join it to the result from my previous round of upper, uh, iteration, excuse me, which is five. So I have seven plus five, so five plus seven here, and I'm getting 12. Um, and then on the last round, I've got 10 and that's my input and my last output was 12. So 12 plus 10 is 22. And in that way, I'm building up basically an accumulation or a cumulative effect of addition here. Um, and this would be the same as running sums on this um, list. Or um, so if we do that here, we see we've got 1, 15, 12 and 22. So yeah, I just mentioned the keyword sums, so I better show that. Um, um, so I'm getting the same result here using the two of those. Um, if I didn't care about the intermediate values here, what I would do is use over instead. So I'm gonna run my forward slash instead. And what over will do is just return the very last result of that cumulative operation. Um, so yeah, we can do things like the sum product um, and get things um, cumulatively from a list using um, mapping or sorry using accumulating iterators so like the name suggests it's successive evaluation uh, evaluations accumulating every time you do it um, so if you need the result of something to feed into the next um, calculation that's when you think of using scan or over um, in this little code snippet here we're just showing that again with a different list um, so we're using sum and then we're doing this is be the the sum product um, and this would be the intermediate results in between so if I was doing um, um, yeah, if I wanted to have my intermediate results, I would use scan rather than over. Um, we've got a few more examples down here, um, and it's just showing different syntax for this. So again, we've seen this before, plus forward slash, we could do asterisks, which will um, calculate the sums and um, or the sum product, excuse me, and then we could use sum or we could use sums. Um, just lots of different ways to do things. Um, and then again, we have got lots of exercises here um, 
and we have a bonus exercise as well at the end on the Fibonacci sequence. So um, um, I will let you go and have a go with those. And that's the end of our functions module. So I'll see you um, in our next module.